All right, welcome back to week 23. And today we are doing rock identification. And um, some of your rock kits, if you're not on our campus, may look a little different. But I'm going to show you kind of what we'll do and maybe give you some ideas. So we know we're studying in earth science. And Psalm 24, 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and all the fullness thereof. We've talked about minerals, we've talked about crystals, and all of those are going to kind of come together in our discussion of rocks today. So why are rocks important? Well, they make up a major part of our biosphere. They kind of hold the earth together, some could argue. Um, rocks are also a major part of our infrastructure. So in building materials, as we talked about with minerals, minerals are used in makeup. They're used, we need minerals to keep us healthy, even in our bodies. And so minerals, which make up rocks, are all around us. And God knew we're a necessary part of life and a necessary part of structure of the earth itself, as well as um, technology and things we build with. So rocks first thing you're going to do is just do some quick review on minerals minerals are an inorganic material found in nature so they're naturally occurring made up of chemicals that are in the earth and so again they're inorganic meaning they were never alive and they um, are naturally occurring that's your big two things now we've discovered when we found about crystals that some minerals, when they are put in the position where the mantle and the crust are close, where they are magma that goes up into the little cracks into the crust and cools, a crystal are when minerals have that perfectly geometric 3D pattern at their atomic level. So they are a very special kind of mineral. Minerals also then can... Um, come together so when you have two or more minerals that's when you have a rock and so some rocks can have lots of minerals in them some rocks are a little more um, defined depending on where they're at and um, how they came to be so we do a little review minerals crystals and now rocks again are the makeup of two or more minerals all right so that's important about the crystals because we'll, that'll help us in our rock identification today, is understanding where minerals are, where crystals form, and then our types of rock. So what are three kinds of rock? Sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. Those are the three big categories of rock that are, will help us identify our rocks today. So who can tell me about sediment, sedimentary rocks? What makes them special or different versus the metamorphic and igneous? So some big, um, just kind of general um, statements. These are not 100% true, as we'll see in our rock identification, but some general statements. Sedimentary rocks are made out of sediment. So dirt, sand, grain, broken down rocks, squished together from pressure to form a rock. So when you think about that, what do you think a sedimentary rock would look like? Do you think it would be really smooth or do you think it's gonna look kind of grainy and rough? Yeah, so they're more grainy. There's more texture to sedimentary rocks. You can see lots of, some of them look like they have little pebbles in them. Um, some of them, the big thing about sedimentary rocks is a lot of them look, they can look layered. And that's from the pressure of sand, dirt, on top of sand and dirt, on top of sand and dirt, different uh, minerals combining on top of each other. Um, forming a sedimentary rock. So they generally are a little more dull in color and they are a little more grainy in texture. Then you have metamorphic. So metamorphic and igneous rocks have a crystalline type appearance to it. So that is important when we think where do these rocks occur and how do they occur? Well metamorphic rocks happen, so you have the sediment on top of the crust of the earth, it gets pushed down and down and down, closer to where the crystals form between the mantle and the crust, where it's hot, magma scoots up in little vents, um, so it's hot, there's more pressure, 
the rocks, the sedimentary rocks then are squished, melted, formed. And again, this is where crystals form. And so there's little crystals um, that can occur in metamorphic rock. So there's a crystalline type appearance to them. Um, so metamorphic, so again, they're in kind of that mantle to crust area. Um, where it's warmer, there's lots of minerals being squished together, changed, and morphed. So sedimentary rocks can morph into a metamorphic rock. And so these have a general, um, they can be shiny or sparkly because they have kind of crystalline appearance. They tend to be a little more, um, they can have layers in them, but tend to be a little more, um, if you think about a rock that's melted and squished together, they're a little more um, consistent, I guess would be a good word, in texture. So not as pebbly and grainy as the sedimentary. Definitely more squished together. They can have some layers, but even those layers are a little more uniform and consistent. And then you have igneous rock. What's special? How is igneous rock? formed. Well, igneous rock is formed when magma turns into lava. The lava cools quickly and you form igneous rock. So when you think about completely melted rock that then cools, you definitely have a much more consistent texture, often smooth, sometimes glassy, um, and that is your igneous rock. So the appearance of the rock are going to be our first clues when we do these things. So that's important. So again, knowing where crystals form helps make sense why metamorphic and igneous have some crystalline features to them versus sedimentary does not. So each of my tutors have Napoleon's little rock cycle here. So again, you want to kind of go over, you have sedimentary from weather breaking stuff down, broken down stuff, that sedimentary rock is pushed down and with heat and pressure, change into metamorphic rock. And then as they are pushed back up or come out through or melted into magma, come out as lava and then are cooled, you have igneous rock, which then gets broken down and weathered and can be turned back into sediment. And so you have what's called a rock cycle where all of these rocks are metamorphosizing or changing in the actual type of rock they are and maybe changing even in the minerals that are in them that are in them and the minerals themselves can be changed um, so rocks what's special about them and the rock cycle you want to talk about so that all takes about five ten minutes and then we're going to spend the rest of our time actually going through step by step to identify some rocks now that we have that background information we took our question, how could, you know, our main purpose here is what is the difference or how can you identify sedimentary versus metamorphic and igneous? Now, I will tell you from an uneducated eye, myself, um, some of these rocks do not fit the pattern we're going to talk about perfectly. So some of them will be up for discussion and that's okay. We're just learning together. Um, we are not trained um, geologists just yet. Um, but following these basic rules will help us to kind of get through. So for us, um, you can rather do a chart. I feel like that's um, only our really our oldest kids could do that. So I made a little thingy bajogger here that we're going to use. It looks confusing, but um, to me it was more consistent than this, which our tutors will have. <laughs> And so we're going to walk through this. This is the tutors will have this as the answer sheet that came with our rock kit. Okay, so you'll have the answers, um, but the kids cannot see that. So we're going to join through this. So I'm going to pick a rock. Here's my first rock. Okay, so sorry, it's not going to focus very well. There we go. All right, so we have our rock. First thing we ask is, is it crystalline or not? So does it have a shiny kind of appearance? Um, and again, this may be hard to see. And this one actually does. It has kind of a sparkly, shiny appearance when it's in the light. So then we're gonna go down on the crystal side. So we have crystals, shiny sparkles. Because it has crystals in it, again, this can only be igneous or metamorphic, okay? Sedimentary do not have crystals in them um, in their sedimentary state. All right, so we're on the crystalline state. So now we know already it's going to be igneous or, meta, or metamorphic. 
So then we say, is it layered? Is there texture to it? Or is it kind of smooth and not layered? And this one is definitely kind of smooth. There's no layers, it looks pretty consistent really throughout. So that puts us in the igneous category. So now we're gonna go down this side. So not layered, smooth. Now we're in the igneous rocks. So now we gotta figure out which one we have. Well, is it light colored or dark colored? It's dark, for sure. Does it have tiny looking crystals, large crystals, or is it really glassy? It is definitely not glassy. Um, it does have some shiny texture, but it's not glassy. And I would say it really has small, um, smallish, um, tiny little crystal-like type things in it. It's definitely not big chunks of it. And so this is, yay, we were right. So we have dark, tiny crystals, it's basalt. Okay, so we identified our rock. Ta-da! All right, so um, let's see. Let's do, uh, I'll show you one that's a little, little different. All right, so here's this one again. So first of all, you can almost kind of tell. Our first question, is it crystallized or no? And yes, this again has crystals in it. It's shiny, sparkly. So we start down this way. We know it's igneous or metamorphic at this point. All right, is it layered or smooth? Or sorry, is it not layered and smooth? Or is it layered and has some texture to it? This one, actually, if you could get a good look, or you kind of can see, it does have some layers in it. It's, you know, it's pretty uniform. It's not super layered, which I'll show you the difference here in a minute, but it definitely is not completely smooth or glassy looking. So it does have some layers to it. So that's going over here in our layered or texture category. So now we know it is a metamorphic rock. So now we just gotta figure out which one. Does it have large crystals in it? Medium, does it tiny? Is it shiny? Is it white? It's not white for sure, it's dark. And so we have to decide, and this again, um, I think it's hard to see on here, but it to me has very tiny flecks of crystals or shininess in it. And so um, this one is phyllite, tiny phyllite. So some might say, I feel like it's bigger. I feel like there's medium type crystals in it. And you could argue that because again, we are not trained. We're not looking at this under a microscope. We're just doing our best observation we can. And then again, you have the answer key to kind of see if we're thinking close or not. Okay, so phyllite. All right, so one last one real quick. This one is beautiful. Now this one, is it shiny and all or not? Nope, definitely dull. I think you can even tell. So no crystals in this one. It's more dull, more grainy looking, more grainy feeling even. So this is a type of sedimentary rock. Okay, and you can see different here, the layers versus the layers in the metamorphic. It's very distinct, which is kind of cool. So definitely layered over here. Is it layered with sand or is it layered in mud? And this one, you know, they might not know and they would say, oh, it looks like mud to me. Well, it kind of does look like mud, but um, it's actually sand. This is sandstone. And so beautiful layered look, um, sedimentary rock, and you can tell the difference um, from that one. So, and then I'm gonna go through the shale to tell you the difference. So that's what we're gonna do. So every two kids will have one of these to kind of walk through, you kind of have them point their finger Follow the trail down, see if you can guess right. Um, they will each, you have several of each kind of rock. So you'll give every pair one of the little rocks to experiment, and then you'll talk them through it together, and then look at your list to see if they're right or not. So again, as much as you can, we have 12 samples in our kit. You're gonna go through as many as you can in your time period. And, um, you know, just reassure it's okay if we don't get it perfect. It's okay if we disagree. Um, there's just always more to learn. And um, it's a complex skill to learn this. But this gives us an idea of what geologists do to identify different kinds of rocks, which again hold different kinds of minerals, um, which God created in nature um, to be used for our bodies and for his purposes. All right, have fun.